everybody. It is the White Sox Talk Podcast brought to you as always by our great friends at Wintrust. And we are here inside the podcast studios powered by PointsBet. On the podcast today, it is my TV partner, the one and only Ozzy Guillen to talk about this upcoming season. When me and Ozzy get together, we have no idea where the conversation is going to go. Do you have any idea what we're going to talk about, Ozzy? You just bring your body. We just like a like a uh, like a couple of these singers so long for so many years. Hey, every time you bring it to the table, one thing we gotta say, the truth yeah. and fact. We're gonna do that. That's that's the easy thing to do. With some opinions, and maybe we should take this on the road. We're like a duo, right? That, Go on tour. I, I would love that. The Ozzy and Chuck <laughs> I know US tour. Hey, I, by the way, I know a lot of Latino gonna show up. Like what this guy gonna say now? <laughs> uh, we'll be big with the Latinos and the Jews. Jewish community. That's a big enough community. I love that. And the White Sox fans. Yeah. All right. We'll have to think about that. All right. It's me and it's Ozzy on the White Sox Talk Podcast. It is coming up next. All right, Ozzy, before we talk about this team and this season, I must say that there was about a week there in October, early November, where I was wondering if you were going to be the manager of the White Sox or you were going to get a job at the Jewel in Homer Glen. <laughs> One of the two. I got better chance to be in Jewel than be managing the White Sox. You know, it was a very intense week uh, because, uh, well, obviously, when you interview by, by manager your job, you want to do it. I was pretty shade when Jerry Reiser and it's the front office people give me opportunity to talk to them. Uh, it was outstanding. I love it. I have a great time. Uh, but like I always say, mm -hmm. they pick the right guy. I think they pick a guy. It's, 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 it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be good for the team. I think this guy, got a, Pedro, have a great chance to put back this or, organization in the top. If they let him do it with the stuff. By the way, Pedro worked with the Seattle Martin for a long time in the front office. In player development. Yes, that's why I say this man he got a lot of thought in his mind, got a different thing. He can help the organization. I'm not saying we are better. You know, hey, they soon they say, no, uh, you're not going to be the guy. Uh, you know I mean? I, I was hurt. My feeling was hurt. I'm not going to deny it. But uh, two hours later, I was playing golf. Uh, then on and off, people were talking, asking me questions. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to make it a big deal. Uh, what it was. And besides that, uh, I think when you have a happy wife, you have a happy life. I know my wife don't want me to be back on the field. And I think she she love, she know I love to work with you guys. She know I love, love to work with you, do what we do every day with baseball. And she know having fun. Uh, it had been three years without, I get into my house going crazy or something by me. And hey, I am where I'm supposed to be. I love what I am. And now I'm gonna miss the field because I love what I do. There are two people on the planet, I think, who <laughs> were the happiest. My wife was, oh my God. That, were, that you would not get the managing job. I mean, I'm being selfish. I'm just joking here. No, it's just, hey, well, it's, it's, it's your wife true. and it's me. Well, my, my <laughs> wife, my wife, no. She, we was thinking about the sand in my house. Oh, wow, the show. Uh, and there's so many great things about it because in the end of the day, after they see so many things, my kids will see so many things around, say, so, you know, we, you're better off doing that. Um, obviously, not for health, because I'm healthy, but just for the stress and all very the time. Stressful. Very stressful time. Um, I got three grandchildren right now. I want to spend more time with them. But, uh, Chuck, I said that. Last year, I will say that this year, I never, never get to go to shower, get dressed, and complain about the traffic to come to work here. That's unbelievable because I'm very, oh, my God, look at this. Hour and a half to get to the studio. Never, never come here with the attitude. Never come here with the think about anything. I love what I do. I go back home. It's all great. And, and you know what I mean? When you love and when you have fun, do what you want to do. It's nothing better than that. Right, so when they hired Pedro Grafal, I'll be honest, I barely knew who he was. Didn't Nobody. Know, yeah, so <laughs> didn't know really much about him. And now that I've gotten to know him, I mean, I don't know him, like, really well, but just know what he's – I mean, I was with him for six weeks hearing him talk baseball. And as spring training went on, I started realizing, you know who he sounds like? He sounds like Ozzy. Like, he looks at baseball like you look at baseball. Well, he likes – the little things, the fundamentals, defense, 
and he is harping on it and harping on it. And it's going to be very interesting, I think, for us to watch him on our postgame show talk about what happens in the games, especially after losses or even wins, whatever it might be, because I have a feeling that you're going to be nodding your head going, you know what, I agree with everything that he's saying. Well, you're going to make my job easier. You know, the, my, the, 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 my hottest stuff last year was when I hear Tony say something like, no, I don't think he should be saying that, or why saying that thing, I get I get tick. Mm -hmm. I said, nope. But I think we could fall. I told you off the record, I said, I told you but when we talk about it, I said, if the organization, let Griffall yeah. do what he's supposed to do at the coaching staff, they have a great baseball people, great mind, great baseball mind. And I think they're starting to put it together with the players. What I hear interviews and comments about him, and, you know, obviously when you go to a thousand spring training like I did, every spring training is like, yeah, we're going to be, we get along, we do that. But I think with Pedro, is a place let Pedro dictate what you should do, how you got to go about your business, and not taking the wrong way. He might say something, hey, why you not hit the cutoff man? Mm -hmm. Well, you're not hitting, then try to make him better. Why you not went to first base with the ball in the door? Why you not went to second? He's going to hold guys accountable. Yeah, I love that. I yeah. love that because I, I said talent take you to some places, but it not take you to win championship because – you got to put talent plus a good at it. I, I, I just say that early today. I hate when they say we are family. I know I, I, I don't know why we are family. That that's so hypocrite. It is hypocrite. Why? Because they not. Well, you understand. No, it. I know there's a family. Wow, that come from peaceful pirates. Like we, we are, are family. family. No, just because it just. Uh, it's hard to be a family when you come from different. Obviously, they're going to treat you like family. I hope they don't treat them like I treat my own family. I hate my own family. But it's it's more about we're united together. Okay, how about we're together. Okay, how about this one? I hate my family, but we're great teammates. Okay, right, uh, right. Well, well, yeah, we're okay. great teammates. Chuck, I played one of the best thing I ever played in my life was the uh, Alana Brace. They even say hi to you. Yeah. What's up? What's up? How you doing? The student game's over. But the student national laundry was over. They pull in the same rope. Yeah. They pull in the same rope. They went after people like crazy. They want to kill everyone. The killing instinct was there. The student game's over. I went out with Galarraga, with the Latinos. Mato went home. I, yeah. But that's that's my point. I say, just be a good teammate. Yeah. Be a great teammate. Support each other. When you don't like somebody about something, say it. Throw him right through his face. Hey, I don't like this. I don't like that. That's hey. what a family should be, too. Well, a family, well, you know what? It's I mean, wouldn't you want someone in your family to call you out? But a family, you don't pick family. You pick your own friends. Yeah. But you don't pick your own family. The Correct. family just got there. Yeah. It's your family. But that's why I say you, with your family, you always you have a chance to be wrong. But with your friends, you better pick the right guys. Okay, so the White Sox opened the season at, of all places, Houston, where Jose Abreu has now signed with the Astros. And Abreu in the offseason, Steve Greenberg of the Sun-Times went down there, interviewed him, and Jose Abreu basically said the White Sox weren't a real family. And for him to say that, what did you think when he said it? I, I hate it because I, I love Jose. I respect Jose more than any player in baseball. But why don't why you wait to go to, to Houston to say that? Why not say it right away? I keep saying every day, Jose Abreu is not a leader. He know how to be the leader. We mentioned we we made him that we leader. We made him the leader. Yeah, by the saying media it, saying yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's not the leader. You know, why have to be the leader? Why? Because we think the White Sox needed a leader after Canerco left. Well, we just assumed. Oh, it'll be Abreu. Now. Okay, that sound good because he's the best player they have. No, because you are the best player. You are yeah. the leader. You watch. You you better watch the the last Comiskey, whatever it was. Yeah, last Comiskey. I was the worst player on the group. The worst one, but I was the leader. Why? Because the players respect the way I respect them. But hold on a second. They respected Jose, but Jose was different from you because you were a vocal leader. Vocal leader. He was not. But Okay, let me tell you one thing about it. I see a lot of leaders, crazy leaders. I see druggy leaders. Drunken leaders? Drunk leaders. <laughs> I see. Hold on a second. What are drunk, drunk. leaders? Oh, okay, let's talk about... President, I know what to talk about United States presidents. Yeah. I know I'm talking about leaders. Yeah, you see leaders cycle, you see a leader dumb. Yeah, 
You see our all leader. All kinds. All kinds of leader, but you never see a leader can talk. What do you mean can't talk? Almost. If you can talk, how are you going to be a leader? How are you going to talk to the people? Okay, a president of the United States, what he does? Talk. Yeah. It, it, that's the leaders, but you cannot believe in the guy at least to listen to him. Right. You understand? Or, or, or I you, don't really understand. But you're you need, a vocal leader. That's what I say. I never see a leader, mute leader. Oh, right, right, right. You never see a mute leader. No, You'll see no. 20,000 different leaders. Even you know, like even dumb ones, terrible yeah. ones, but you never see one is mute. You have to talk and convince people right. what you think. You want to be a leader, Michael Jordan, uh, yeah. um, Big Mama, rest in peace. Those guys, Daddy Jeter. Yeah. Daddy Jeter wasn't the best player they had, but he was the leader. Why? Because he respect them. He go about the business the right way every day. To be a leader, you cannot be a leader once a week. I know. So when Abreu said that, you know, because I had, I mean, I've never really had a beef with Jose Abreu. How could you? But I didn't like how he ended his career with the White Sox. Remember the last game of the regular season at home? He didn't want to play in the game. He didn't want to come out after the final out and wave to the fans. Didn't like that. That left a bad taste in my mouth. And then he leaves and he kind of just, you know, kind of rips the team. Like, I, like what? You're, you gotta like you gotta be better than that. Well, you know what that happened to me when I left. I read the team, I read the organization. I just did because your feelings being hurt. Yeah. You think they're gonna treat you better, you know? Because you, I think you earn that thought. Yeah. Man, they, they, I should be treating better. Or they're not gonna sign me. That sometimes you forgot this is this is a business and you gotta move on. Mm. And I cannot criticize that because I did it worse than Jose. What did you do? I just rip everybody. I I just rip everyone, especially when after managing. Managing is a little calm because uh, they just I was a, have a deal with another right, one. Right. But, but when, when the insurance stop, yeah, I mean, who you going to bring? They bring I don't know. Uh, was it Caruso? Caruso. Yeah. Then I like say Caruso. Yeah. Then, then well, I, I gotta find this. Go keep talking. Then I say they're gonna bring Mike Caruso for me. I just play 152 games for whatever, and I have one year left in my contract. Then I went off. I said, if you bring a good shirt, if you bring TA. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, 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 that's yeah, good. Yeah. Okay, good. Hey, man, good luck. But when you bring Michael Russo to, to replace Isaac Ian, I thought uh, that was on respect, especially when I had one year contract left. And uh, that's why I went off. I went off on Jerry. I went off in, in, in uh, who's the idiot? This is a general manager, Ron Schuler. Yeah. And, and it like, you know what I mean? You replaced me by, with Michael Russo. Yeah, because Mike Russo come in the trade, one of the worst trades the White Sox ever made. Yeah. And they had to make say, hey, we got to make this work. Let's go Mike Russo. And uh, I find out who Mike Russo was. Thank you to Robbie Ventura. <laughs> but uh, by the way, I saw I found an article about you, and you took the high road in this article. This is from 1998, spring training. And you're saying the nicest things. You go, you go, I've never seen Mike Caruso play, but my advice to him is just play the game with no fear. Don't expect... Not to make mistakes because you will make mistakes. Don't worry about mistakes and believe in yourself. You're saying nice things about Caruso. I, I even know who, who he was. He go, you go, he's there because he has no reason to be there. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> you go, he's young and he'll get better with experience. Hopefully he'll have a great career like I did with the White Sox. You said nice things about him. Well, I cannot talk about Michael. That's not why it's Michael Russo's fall. Well, who are you ripping? Are you, are you ripping? Who was the GM? The organization. Mm. I, I, I know what's ripping. I know, I, I know how nothing. Why I had to rip the kid? You know, I had nothing to do with this. Mm. Then that's why I say, hey, because I want to stay in Chicago. I want to stay in Chicago. Say, hey, I can be the backup player. Whatever it is, for whatever reason, they rather pick my contract yeah. and say, G get out of here. And they say, you know, but I, I think I, I know how Jose feel yeah. in that opportunity because you feel lost. You feel like this is my house. This is this is where I belong. All the song, you're not. Yeah. And that that's why I think the feeling is like that. But Jose was right, though. Yeah. Jose, he's Jose say that. It's for a reason. Jose is not the type of guy going to say something. And, nah, wow. Well, I say Jose is just like, no, that, that wasn't the right way. And you know, and I know, is right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know for a fact, is right. Yeah, but here, my problem was this, and is this, and I haven't had a chance to talk to Jose Abreu about this, but if there was a problem in the clubhouse about them not being a family, whether he was the leader or not, he was, certainly was a leader. Let's be honest. He might not have been the vocal leader. He could have done something about it, right? 
He yeah. could have, you know, if the family wasn't, if there was a problem with the family, well, he was the king of the family in the clubhouse. He could have maybe tried to do something to fix well, it. Well, maybe, maybe the way, that's the way we see it. Yeah. Right. Of course. That's the way we this see it. This is me just talking on a podcast. I haven't no, talked no, no, about it. No, no, no. But all, everybody in Chicago, oh, he's a leader. I yeah. keep saying he's not. He's not. Right, right, right. It's not his style. It's but not he, that but way. He, but he still was he, a he leader. Could, he could have said, hey, listen, stop that. Yes. Let's do this. Yes. But uh, I think his English, maybe, you know, was kind of like, you know, oh, he can speak. But he, he don't want to be that type of guy to right. be the the guy where everybody going to hate because he says something. Yeah. And that they maybe want to stay, he might say, you know what, I'm going to stay away from this. I'm going to take care of myself, like the way he did. Yeah. He got a lot of players around him that respect him. They don't respect him as a leader, but respect him as a person, as a player. And, uh, but you know what I mean? I, it, why sucks when I say, listen, man, the leader of the ball club, it had to be Pedro Grifo. You know, how to be TA. You know, how to be Elo Jimenez. You know, how to be Grandal. You know, how to be Lynx. It had to be Pedro Grifo. That's the leader of the club because he's the one who got to make the decision. Make things easier, I think that's a good sign by them when they're saying Andrews. Mm -hmm. Elvis Andrews. Elvis Andrews. That's a good sign by them because this guy is a leader without being a leader. He's a fun leader. Yeah. A, but he says stuff in the club. It's funny-wise, kind of funny, but he will people will listen to him because they respect they have yeah. for him how many years in the big. And he already played here, and he know what's going on around the field. All right, so we taped our season preview show right before we taped this podcast, and we made our bold predictions for 2023. Your bold prediction surprised me. I don't, I don't, I believe that mm -hmm. that's a possibility, but for you to say that, can you share with everybody your bold prediction for 2023? I think Pedro Grifo, we manage you the year because I think these guys prepare better than anybody in baseball, anybody, including one of the best managers to prepare for the game, to me is the best manager, Show Walter. I don't think anybody prepared himself better than Show Walter. No one. This man is, 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 is in another level. I think we all see the the up and down of this ball club from the cross of the field. Yeah, You see what they need, what they need to get done. And I say, is the White Sox organization, whoever it was, whoever it is, let this man conduct the White Sox the way it should be. Not this ball club. The organization is going to change. Because I think he's a baseball guy, and I think, he, by the way, when I say that in the air, I say, and I want to present a the trophy. of what? Of the trophy? Oh, the, or the way he's the manager of the year. I say, <laughs> as you present the trophy to Pedro Guilfro as the manager of the year. So this was interesting to me. So... I'm at spring training, and we go to Pedro Grifol's office. He's talking to the media, and I look at this humongous photo behind him. Humongous photo, massive. It was like eight feet high. In the office? In, in the office? Of what in the go? office. Oh, wow. And it's a photo of you at the parade in 2005 after you won the World Series. Really? Yes. That's unrespectful. <laughs> Come on, get that thing out of there. Where you turn around like, uh-oh, this yeah. is what I got to win. You're, so you're overlooking. You're, the photo of you is overlooking Pedro Grafal in that office. Oh, wow. I, I, you know, I, 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 be honest with you, is I'm the manager? Yeah. I would say, hey, can you please put another picture or something like Mini Minoso or somebody out there? No, I think it's a sign of respect. And it also, if I'm the manager, I'm like, I want that. Like, that's what... I can potentially help bring to Chicago. <laughs> let's, make, let's make this this just funny. How you call podcast? What, what, what you We're saying? NBC. No, no, I know, but I, how you call this podcast? Podcast. Oh, podcast. Okay, let's make it for podcast. You know what? Podcast. Let's make it better. I say, why they not let, let me go to a spring training with them <laughs> to help them? I know. Why not? You should have been there. Okay, it's all about pictures. Well, you know what? You're gonna get to know Pedro this year. Yes, I, I, you know me. I'm looking for. I, I don't know. I never. I might check his hand, maybe. Yeah, but, why not? No, I'm no, no. I might check his hand oh, in, in the, the past. past. Okay. Yes, in the past, I might talk to him in the past, but I, you know me. So hold on, I had a conversation with him Be, because vodka make you forget people, forget people face. Uh, you're so you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> vodka, ask Hawk Harrelson about yeah, that. Oh, uh, it make vodka to urine. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's a big fan of you. I think Pedro Grafal is a big fan. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. So you'll 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 you see me play, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, so you, you manage. 
I mean, he's a fan. No, it's a funny because I know my son, Osney, know him very well from Miami. Everybody in Miami, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. everybody in Miami in baseball, they know each other. Yeah. And Osney, the one keep me posed, I said, Dad, this guy's, then I start looking what he was doing and I, I listen what he say. Yeah. And I love it. I did. I know what it is. I don't like it. I say, what? What are we doing here? But I love what he say, the way people should be playing, the way you should be prepared, how we going to be prepared, how we going to come in here after every that's, day. That's what I was saying Every to day I, I listen to it. It's like, every time I listen to it, it was like, wow, interesting. Yes. Interesting because we need to hear that. Yes. He had to prove to people how good it can be, how good it want to be. Yeah. And that, that thing is going to make him better. Right. Now, as we tape this, the White Sox have not even played a single game. So I don't want to be, you know, saying, exaggerating my thoughts about him. But I just, hearing him talk day after day after day, here's a guy who's sharp. He says stuff. I learn things. He's not trying to hide stuff from us. Because you can't BS Sox fans. Because we just, Sox fans know what's going on. And I think he knows that as well. Well, I think he's a baseball man, bro. Yeah. He's a baseball man. That's what I say. It's stay away from him. White Sox. They, you let him do his job. Everybody. You're talking about from the marketing department to the, the PR department yeah. to uh, the, the big department. You know, all departments. Stay away from him. Let him do his yeah. stuff. Or move on. Because as soon as you start putting your nose and tell the guy, hey, I think we should do this better. Because when you told Pedro, say, we should do the Pedro will say, I think that before you did. That's the type of guy he is. Yeah. That's the type. Well, I don't know him. What I hear about him is prepare himself. He loves baseball. Love baseball. Mm -hmm. And one thing about it, when you love the game, your feeling can get hurt or somebody going to hate you. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I love what he's going to bring to the table. To me, I thought, I thought, and when you know that, that's what Tony Arusa is supposed to bring him here to the table you've just put those guys in a spot and he never did tony was trying to be their buddy he was trying to fit in with the them way. and they needed the why opposite. who are you you know who i am tony freaking la rusa who are you why you ever did nothing in this game you know who i'm managing i managed this guy that guy this guy that guy and the hall of fame another hall of fame who the, that's why i thought when they hired tony i said yes we got the right guy i said why Put everybody in check. Everybody, all the son, he just want to be nice with the guys, get along with the players. I understand the mood. But in the meanwhile, the, the player, besides that, they get hurt. People forgot Tony win 93 games the first year. He did. They won a division. Yes. They win the division. You know what I mean? Wow. That was good enough to say, okay, respect. The next day, he lose first two games. Tony, what are you doing? I was the first great side him in Anaheim. Yeah. When he bring Foster, like, what? What is this? Okay, but. Little by little, start uh, start taking away stuff. So people start. We are like the the we we because I'm part of the media. Start saying stuff about it, and the people, the fans start don't believe in him. Yeah, yeah. Start hating him more, more because they hate him before he even put the uniform on. We no reason. And but after little by little, start it was that. And unfortunately, uh, I think I, he got sick. He moved away from the game. But people in Chicago can't forget that. I know my fans very well. The best manager the White Sox have for the last 35 years was Miguel Cairo for two games, three games. Oh, my God, look at Cairo. Players, a bunch of hypocrites. We love Tony Arusa. Tony Arusa is all dead. Tony Arusa love it. Rah, 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 rah. Yeah. Next day, oh, Miguel Cairo bring what we need. <laughs> bunch of hypocrites. You can put the 25 players last year in my face when we go there. So it's a bunch of people. Okay, why? They were trying to be respectful to Tony. They didn't want to say Tony sucks. Well, nobody. We uh, love Tony. Okay. One thing you say, I don't want to say my, I, I got God's, I hate my dad. I do. And you know that. I said, well, my dad, I don't give a crap about my dad. That's why I cannot be hypocrite. My thing is, every time you sound, T.A., I know what, hey guys, I know what to jump on T.A.'s. Name. I just I, example. Say, we loved uh, we loved Tony like a dad. Like we love Tony. I said, bro, TA, you only know Tony for two, three days. Okay, I know dude, I, I know what he want me. I know what he but in the meanwhile, they I, say I do, that I do know this. I but do they say that about uh, the, the 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 one before uh Renteria. Renteria. We love Renteria. We love Renteria. I said he what? left, we love Tony better. But what do you want them to say? Yeah, Tony's okay. No, I said, what's up to Tony? Best manager in baseball. 
but, but no, like, no, like, by the way, let's listen to this. This year, I know, I don't think I hear one player say, wow, we love Griffon. We love Pedro. No, they say, we like what he does. Yeah. We into it. We got to try to do the thing. That's a different thing. That's what people have to understand my point. They don't say, oh, we love Pedro. He treats us like his own sons. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, this man is the best. Oh, he speaks two languages. And all this. No. He, he say, you know what? This is a good baseball man, and I'm going to follow yeah. what he does. Mm -hmm. No family. I hope the White Sox player beat the crap at each other before the game. But when they go out there, beat the another team. Yeah. I don't want good kids. I want guys to go fight. I want a guy to win games. I don't care they hate me. If they love me. They love they London respect me and they win game for me. That's all that matters. So Pedro said this in spring training. He said, I uh, the first day of spring training, I think he said it. Well, I know he said it when the full squad reported, and I, he may have also said it when uh, pitchers and catchers reported. He told this to us in the media. He said, he told the guys, the whole team, he said, we're not going to win a World Series at spring training. We cannot win a World Series during spring training. We can lose it. Yes. That's smart. Why? You talk about how, how good baseball man is. He's a great baseball man. Why we can lose it? We're not preparing ourselves the way we got to do it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to win it. We're not. Who's like, why? Because we're not going to prepare ourselves. We're going to play. Seeing like last year, it was a selfish team. I want to do it. Me, For myself. Me, me, me. me. me there was me, no me. we. Yes. A we, it was a, to the media. Oh, we know we do. No, no, no. Here's, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think it was we for the first couple of weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then things did not go very well and eventually became me. me. Every man for himself. But, or, but, or, they, or they, some of them tried to be we, but in the end, it be, ended up being but, me. Now, I'm not talking about every player on the team. But, but it's a funny thing about it because this baseball game is about me. Mm -hmm. In the end of the day, it's about us. Yes. But it's about me. I got to do my job. To make yes. us better. Yes. And that's why. But, man, I play, I play with team. We love each other. We hug each other. We get drunk each other. We suck. <laughs> we terrible team. We lose every day. and uh, It's not fun. But when you have that kind of talent yeah, and you get along well, you know how to love him. You know how to spend time. I don't expect, well, I don't, I don't expect Moncada going out, have a dinner with, uh, with Clevinger. But I That'd be my, interesting. I, I wanna, Yo, Mankata and Mike Clevenger, buddies. Now we're in trouble. <laughs> then, 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 but I expect when Clevenger pitch, Moncada be the guy there. Yeah. Say, hey, buddy, I'm behind you. We got the same. Yes. That's my point when I say, I don't care they hate each other. I don't expect them. I don't, I don't expect, I don't expect Juan Uribe hang around with Poco Nerco, with Poco Nerco drinking a wine. $200 wine made by this guy that year, that thing, when Uribe is just drinking run and coke <laughs> and eating, you know. Twinkies? So, no, it's like, I don't but know Poco Neco eating steak, steak, steak and yeah. uh, give me a lobster, you know, with his wife, everything is uh, very classy. This may be eating rice and chicken and, and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, you know, but that's, I don't expect that to be friends, yeah. but when they play, to, when they put their uniform together, they kill each other to win games. And that's that's all it matters. Okay, so you said earlier in the podcast that you think, you believe, you're predicting that Pedro Grafal is going to win the manager of the year. Yes. You're kind of, you've been explaining it to a certain degree, but why do you think in the end he's going to win it? Because they're going to win so many games, because he's going to get the most out of his players. But that's it. And, and he might say, but they might win 50 games, but I say, look at this guy and fight. They look at the guy and the way they play. Because manager of the year, you know, you know, it's, a lot of times he's not the guy winning more games. He's a guy like, okay, you earn. You earned it. You earn to be manager of the year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes manager of the year, they, they manage of the year, next year they get fired. It happened to, to uh, my boy, my boy uh, Jack McKinnon. Yeah. Happened to a lot of guys. And and but when you earn that, and I wanted to be manager of the year to show people, he, I got the best. I take out of the best to all these guys mm -hmm. to play the game right, to have fun. And I want him. I want them to play good, to play good game, to play good baseball. No matter you lose or win, you will lose and win. Just to feel the fans excited about baseball. Last year, the fans hate this ball club 
in the second week of the season. I don't want that to happen. It's, 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 it's bad. It's, it make our job bad. Like, yeah. oh my God, again? Now you have to be nice. My wife told me a couple of times, I said, hey, easy on and Tony. Thousand times, easy on Tony, easy on this. I said, Ivy, this is my job. Yeah. This is my job. It's, it's, if, if I agree what Tony say or what Lynn say or something, I'd be hypocrite. I'd be hypocrite, why? Because fans go be say, we don't want to hear that. They want to hear the true fact and why. If I say something and people don't like it, I need the ballpark maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. Did anyone ever say anything to you? They better not. No, did they last year? No. Yeah. They better not. Yeah. You know why? Because I know what it's lie to the fans. I don't respect anybody about baseball. We no reason mm -hmm. lying to them. I don't need it. But when I say something to you or to the to the I'm a thousand percent right what I say because when you come in, you better bring your lunch because I will embarrass you are from everyone. <laughs> Why I say that? I say that I keep saying that they want us to say good stuff about them. That's easy. Play good, win yeah. games. It make our job easy. Hey guy, we do uh, party, are the easy shows. party, party. Yeah, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. When they play like that and people wait for us to what the what the hell Chuck and Ozzy gonna say? People wait for that. And I go say, well, guys, um, Chuck, I think tomorrow, we get it tomorrow. Tomorrow sees on the mound. No, that's, no, you got to tell the guys exactly what you see. Yeah. You, they like it or they don't. The long you don't respect them. Yeah. Or I should don't respect them a lot. But the long you don't respect them, you can say whatever you want. And if they don't believe what we say or we need to talk about it, that, that's easy. Confront. Say it. Something. Whatever yeah. it is. And I, 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 I think this year it will be... I just say going to be more fun last year. That's no doubt about it. I think this year, I think the White Sox, I know what they predict anything. I know what they jinx them. But I, I hope they stay healthy. It's going to be fun, a, a fun team to watch. Yeah, and so Terry Francona, I don't even know. I think he won manager of the year. I don't even know if he did. But that was a team that was not expected to do much. The team took on the personality of Francona, yeah. and they won the division. So. Shoot, if he's going to be the manager of the year, Pedro Grafal, if they take on the personality of him. I take it. I take that chance. Yeah. I mean, we talk about Pedro, but I think the people around Pedro, the, the coaching, coaching staff, staff I, 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 might, I don't know them well, but I know how professional they are. I know they prepare every day. I know that. I, I'm, I have a lot of friends in baseball. Uh, I know Castro very well. For, Castro played with the White Sox. I know him for a long, long time. Uh, I know Rodriguez, tremendous baseball guy. The rest, I don't know them that well. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a former manager. Yeah, is your bench coach. Yeah. Oh, I said Miguel. What am I saying? Uh, Montoya, Charlie Montoya. Montoya. Yeah. That, that's a plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a plus. I mean, I can't remember the last time the White Sox had a bench coach with managing experience. I never, I never, I don't, well, Miguel Cairo, one of my buddies, we play golf all the time. Yeah. We just love it. Miguel Cairo said, Who you, you are who you are? You are the Chloe there? Or you the bad boy? I say, No, I'm the bench coach. I say, I never I never, it, 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 let me ask you, Tony Russo know who you are, you know your name? See, how this team won eighty one games. I just I keep saying Johnny that. Hart because I mean Bro, I'm telling I Miguel Cairo say, Did Tony know who you are? Did Tony I <laughs> know. you say, Hi Tony, I'm Miguel Cairo, I'm your bench, I'm your bench coach. coach. <laughs> I mean No. No, and I and, Here's the thing. I don't know if Tony let Miguel Cairo be the kind of bench coach he could be. I know that Pedro Grafal is going to let Montoyo be to help him. an actual bench coach. Well, that happened. A lot of people say, oh, wow. You know, Joy Cora, he was my right-hand man. He don't let anything go by me. No. And sometimes people go, oh, you do what Joker said. What? If Joy Cora was the manager of the White Sox, like people think about it, or Mar the Marlins, Joy Cora should be manager right now in, in the big league. Yeah. Very easy. I say people like, what? It's nobody, I don't think, with all respect, because I have great coaches, I see a lot of great coaches, it's nobody prepared better than Joy Cora to coach. Never. And he was in the top everything. Hey, remember this. This guy even played for two weeks. This guy, how about this? Tomorrow's a matchup. He got all the stuff he know what's in my mind. He remind me. He remind me about what we should do together right. as a coaches. Yeah. You needed to hear that. You had to. For some time, like, hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, pinch it. Huh? Oh, you're supposed to pinch it for that guy, pinch roll for that guy a long time ago. Joy, I don't, I don't need to. Joy told me, 
hey, this guy is Conor go get a base at night. We're down by one. Pinch it. Wow. He's, I don't know that. I know deserve to be a manager. But. George, would, he, you, you, would, Joy say, would he you'd hear that in your ear while uh, this no, game's going no, on? No, Joy, Joy told me, you, the guy got a pinch run for him. Yeah. If you need it, he's ready. There you go. That's what you needed to hear. He not say, hey, you better pinch it for that guy. You yeah. No. You say, hey, the guy you're supposed to pinch, if you, if you want to pinch it for that guy, he's ready to go. Of course, I know I'm going to pinch it for, for one of those boys. Jim told me, PK, game on the line. Like, hey, this... this is a, if we all by one, this guy's ready to play for defense. I know that, but I, I say, hey, I know that. You don't have to tell me that. That's on respect, and it's trying to help me yeah. to not make that mistake. And that, that's why the coach is all about it. All right, so the season starts on Thursday, ESPN. They're thieves. They have taken opening day away from us. But we have the second game of the season, and about 150 more. So you're going to be seeing a lot of Ozzy and myself on NBC Sports Chicago as we do our pre- and post-game shows. We have an hour-long pre-game show on Friday. Game starts at 7.30. I think we're on from 6.30 to 7.30. Gordon Beckham is going to join us. Actually, no, the game starts at 7. We're on from 6 to 7. Well, I got it fun, man. Yeah. You know, our show is fun. Our show is uh, legit. Not because we are in the show. It's just because we told the people what they, should, they, should, they have to be here and what to be know about it. And it's better when... You know, we got Gordon, another uh, or Frank, not because we miss them or we need them. It's just because he made the show a lot better with different opinions. Yes. In the same way we put Sandy. And I love to do the show with them because it's just not just me making my opinion with you. I think we have somebody out maybe with di different ideas or different way to see the game. It and ends I love up being, it. Yeah, it ends up being just a different show. But the same, we're not wanting better than the others. It's not a show. This is like a, we just need to have a cup of drink. I hope they do it. Have a cup of vodka. We just talk. You say what you have to say to the face. Wow. We uh, smoke cigar. We just well, we're going to do that again. That's our show. Yeah, late That's night with our Chuck show. and Ozzy's Our, our show back. is not like, all right, guys, one, two, three, no. one, two, three, one, two, three. No, we just we let the flow thank to you. We let them flow. But I think our show, just, I swear to God, you just need a, a little, uh, little, little vodka. Little vodka, little. whatever. Yes, I don't know about the bottle. Just wet the whistle. Yeah, well, last year, last year, I want to drink. Ten bottles before oh, we man. started. We oh, started before we started post game show. Like I want to be so drunk right now. Oh my god! But hey, we enjoy it. We love it. I'm glad I'm back. I swear yes. to God, I'm very. Uh, I, I'm so excited to to. What well, was today? I come here at one o'clock. You guys are so early. It was like spring training you game for me. Wait. Like yeah, maybe two weeks. Like ah, thirty minutes. Talk. It's a traffic in 55. I'm late. <laughs> never. I'm never late. Yeah. Well, I, listen. You drinking? Last year brought me into therapy. You were Doctor Ozzy. I was. I was needing therapy. Well, Psychologic. It, I needed psych, uh, psychiatric help. By the way, your mom. So say, you guys write about this. You guys need that. I, lo I love that. But we have fun, man. We yeah. try to make different. But no matter what we do, all the goofy thing we do when we talk, is what we need to talk. When yeah. people need to hear, that's more important. All right, Ozzy, this was great. Good talk. We'll be talking a lot of White Sox baseball for the next six months. I hope it's seven months and goes deep into the postseason, and uh, we'll see what happens. I spent a lot of good things happening. Okay. Please, I'm getting older. I don't need a heart attack. I don't want to get mad with the ball club again. Me neither. Let's win some game, please. I know, seriously. And that is a wrap for this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast, brought to you by Wintrust, your home for White Sox. Check in with free ATMs nationwide. Go to their special White Sox webpage, www.wintrust.com slash Sox. Hawk Harrelson, take it away. Thanks, our Chuck. And this edition of the White Sox Talk Podcast is over.